to another edition of Positively Douglasville. We're very, very excited today to have my friend in studio with us today. It's the district attorney, the district attorney for Douglasville, for Douglas County, Brian Fortner. Thank you, Brian. Welcome to Positively Douglasville. It is such a delight to have you. Everyone is all up in arms here at City <laughs> Hall. We're very excited that you're We're, here. I'm thrilled to be here. It's always <laughs> good to do something with the city. It's always good to be with you, Mayor. So Thank you so much. To, I'm thrilled to be here. Yes, sir. Well, we're going to talk about the things that are going on in Douglas County, but first I just okay. want to talk a little bit about you so that yes, people will be able to um, connect with you and, and have a story behind right. the big guy. Yeah. You know, this yeah. is so funny. You're such a servant. Your heart is the heart of a servant. I'm going to tell this story, and I hope I don't embarrass <laughs> you, but we had a meeting earlier this week, and we were leaving out of the sheriff's department, and a lady walked over to you and she was like, I need some help. Yeah. And you're an attorney, you're one that you're a big dog, right? Yeah. And you just said, sure, you know, I'll help you. And that's how you are. You know, you, yeah. you're so approachable to people. And I was trying to whisper like, he's the district attorney yeah. to the lady. <laughs> well, <laughs> but, we, you know, yeah. I, I just want to help people. And, and I don't really like the notion of just pawning people off. I don't like yeah. that. That's not my job. That's not my role. Yes, if sir. I can figure out a way to get them the help they need, I'm going to try to do it. Yes, just sir. That's how I feel about it. So. That's right. And now that happens all the time. Yeah, to all you. the time. And, and you're I'm in sure school. It happens to you all the time. Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah and people so. don't want to hear that. And really, right. if you're here to serve the community, if you That's can't right. help them, then you can direct them to a point or a person that can, hopefully, right. to if, get the if you we're know, working the, issue. the way we should be. We're mm -hmm. all a team. And so we have to be able to lean on each other and direct people to people that can meet their needs. And so, you know. I, she probably wasn't looking for the DA, but I had some information <laughs> wow. that I could give her and, yeah. and hopefully help her along the way. So, I'm sure. I'm yeah. sure you did. Well, I want to talk to you about you. Um, you're from Atlanta. My husband's from Atlanta. He's a Grady baby, and he oh, went yeah. to Fulton High, Redbirds. Yeah. Yeah. And so you're from Atlanta. If you can talk to us a little bit about that. And, um, you know, the Falcons, they may need you to come back and play some football. Man, you can take you, us all the way to the Super Bowl. I don't think I, I, don't think I have <laughs> what they need. They need speed. And so, you know, I'm, I'm more of a stationary ball player. So, you know, but uh, I did. I grew up in Atlanta, actually. Uh -huh. Grew up in uh, in between Cabbage Town and mm. Grant Park. My yes, great grandfather worked at the old mill, so Cabbage Town okay. was sort of a mill village there. Mm -hmm. and so I just had family all over that place. And uh, you know, my mom had me when she was very young. She was mm -hmm. 17 years old, so she mm -hmm. was really a child. Wow! And so we lived with my grandmother mm -hmm. in, in that type of environment. She's the matriarch. She's the hub. That's right. And so everybody who was out of jail or wow. out of prison or kicked out of their house would stay there with grandmother, and that's really where mm. me and mother, my brother, lived. And I grew up there, mm -hmm. spent most of my early years there, and then uh, moved out to South DeKalb County uh -huh. as I moved in into my teen years mm -hmm. out there. But I love Atlanta. I, yeah. I've never gone too far, <laughs> and so you know I love being here in Douglas County and in Douglasville because we have a little bit of country. That's but right. We can be right in the city too if we need to be. So it's it's, it's home. I love it. I love it here. So. Wow. Now Grant Park. Yeah. My goodness, hasn't it changed? It's it's unbelievable. I was uh, I actually visited the home I grew up in on, uh -huh. on Burn Street there recently. And remembering what it was like, and you know, I don't want to speak too negatively about it, but it wasn't a nice yeah. place at that time, <laughs> yeah. and we were just uh, we're just getting by. And mm -hmm. but the home that I grew up in is on the market now for like the low low price of nearly six hundred thousand dollars. Come on now! They've put a a whole <laughs> nother level on it. Wow! So there's literally a second story that was not Gosh. there when I grew up there, and there's homes all around it. So it's just. It's mind-boggling, really, how much it's it's changed. Mm -hmm. The the infrastructure is still the same. Yes, but it's the everything else. Yeah, has, and near, changed near and, the zoo and, and all right. of that. It's we really, really nice. We used to walk nice. up the road and, and play in Grant Park and oh, go to wow. the zoo and and all of that there. So wow. that, that's and home. Yeah. That's home. That is awesome. And DeKalb Absolutely. County, with Emory and yeah. all the things going on in DeKalb, is really up and coming. Just the yeah, entire booming. community it's it's is booming. So. Um, so from there, you went to college at North Georgia. Yep, I went to uh, North Georgia. My my mom had had moved up to Dawsonville uh -huh. at that point in time, and I went up and and toured the school and uh, loved it up there. It was quiet, and that's what I needed. I needed to get focused <laughs> on my studies, and so uh, I went up there, and uh, I knew 
what I wanted to do. So wow. I went to law school at Georgia State uh -huh. University, and that was kind of like coming home for me. Yeah. Because there's so much exposure to the legislature and just everything going on there mm -hmm. in Atlanta, and they had a real good lit litigation program mm -hmm. and had some prosecutors involved in that. So I was real excited to go back to Georgia State, and, and um, that's where I went to law school, and I loved it. Very good. Well, I think my son has gotten the bug. Yeah. You know, he's a Georgia Southern. Good. He's been there two weeks. Yeah. It's been kind of difficult for me. He's oh, my I'm first sure, born sure, and my yeah. only boy. Yeah. And so um, he's all, talking all this time about biomedical engineering. But then this past summer, he did an internship at a law firm. All right. And so we moved him in, and we were talking, you know, we wanted him to go to the engineering dorm. They have yeah. a live, work, study program or something. Right. And he said, well, I'm not going to go to an engineering dorm. I'm going to stay over here in Kennedy Hall. I said, okay. And he said, you know, President Kenny was an attorney, Mom. I said, <laughs> yeah. And he said, I really enjoyed working this summer uh, with Mr. Citizen at the law firm. I said, okay, Joel. He said, I may change my major. I said, all right, buddy. But my brother, you know, Anwa is, uh, has a degree in political science okay. and teaches. So I said, maybe all this politics, I thought they were going to yeah. stay out of it and get into medicine, but he may be switching over into law. So I think that once was, you, yeah. Lady Justice may That's right. Once it get gets you, you it gets you. <laughs> it's, uh, it's just, it's one of those things that, will just give you the opportunity to have a positive impact on people's lives if mm -hmm. that's what's important to you. Mm -hmm. um, you know, people say, well, why aren't you out there trying to make, you know, big amounts of money? And yeah. there's just always another dollar to chase. So mm -hmm. that kind of stuff's just not important to me. But having an impact yeah. is important. But if you had him over there with John Citizen <laughs> and those guys, I know them real well, I'm sure. He had a good taste in his mouth, but yeah, he give him my it. car, and I'm definitely not going to talk oh, him right. out of it. I'm going to talk him into <laughs> it. So we need more good yeah. attorneys with, with good wow. hearts who really care about people. We, we just really do. Well, thank you. you and, and just getting his foot in the community, yeah. and um, it can make a difference. Ken Bernard, Kenny Absolutely. Bernard talks to me about, Absolutely. you know, interning at Fowler. Hartley right. Rowan Fowler when he was in college and he says that whole filing system that they moved to the new building I did that filing system yeah. by myself <laughs> Kenny Bernard that's Kenny Bernard <laughs> filing system yeah. that's what he says so, he, he yeah. makes me laugh yeah. and so he said Joel you know went the first day with a suit on and he said what did they tell him when he came back I said wear some jeans and khakis because you're gonna be moving files yeah <laughs> so it was the same thing but well, that's I'm glad. good that's good to hear I'm excited I knew he was over there yeah uh, with Mr. Citizen and everything, so mm -hmm. I was hoping that was going to go positive. Yeah, he's excited about that. Good. So talk to us about your family. I know you have beautiful, I was in your office and saw those little beautiful, handsome faces. Yeah, they're not, so, they're not so little <laughs> anymore. anymore. They just started middle school. I have twin Woo! boys, and uh, it's, it's a different world now <laughs> because they're changing classes and new mm -hmm. subjects, and yeah. they're talking with the, the big boys and girls. You know, they're there with the 7th and 8th graders now. Wow. And so it's a, every day really is a new experience because we're, we're having to have all the talks fathers yeah. and sons have to have, <laughs> and, and, you know, it's uh, one of the biggest joys of my life, really. Wonderful. Boys. And uh, their mother, my mm -hmm. wife, Bobby, um, we're just very involved in uh, – and bringing them up the right way. And it's, yes, it's, sir. it's tough these days. There's so much mm -hmm. noise out there. You and I That's talk right. about that. Mm -hmm. And we're going to do everything we can to, to keep them moving in the right direction despite all of that. So yes, sir. They're, uh, they're really the joy of my life. So. They are they're good boys, too. They're, cutie pies. They're, yeah, they get yeah. that from their mom. They're little, they're little handsome <laughs> fellas. There's no doubt about that. Yes, sir. So. It's some from you, too. A little bit. But, yeah. um, yes, sir. So it, when, to talk about children, earlier this week when I said we were in that meeting, you were telling the sheriff and the, and the group that was there right. that you really have been going into schools and doing this for a long time, and you look back on gang information from 2008. Right, And it's right. almost... 2018. So it's been almost a yeah, decade right. that you've been trying to educate and go into the school systems and talk to the kids. So if yeah. you can just share with us a little bit about that. You know, it's it, being the DA, and mm -hmm. everybody knows that I run the office, prosecutes all the felony offenses. Yes, sir. Being good at prosecution is the background of my office, so to speak. It's, mm -hmm. it's the skeleton. Mm -hmm. But what I've learned in my experience as a prosecutor is that to keep the community safe, it takes a lot more than just sending people to prison. Yes, sir. And so very early on, I had the first experience where I sent a, a teenager, a young man, away mm -hmm. for life for a very serious wow. crime. And that has an impact on you. And yes, over the years, I began to see that I would be dealing with these teenagers and they really wouldn't have an understanding of the law. Mm -hmm. Although the system, when they turn 17, looks at them as an adult. Mm -hmm. But we aren't really doing anything to teach them what comes along 
with being an adult when mm. you're talking about accountability for your behavior just in society. Yes. And people don't understand the law. Consequences. So I, exactly. I would explain it to them mm -hmm. and I would explain it to their parents and you just kind of see their eyes open mm. up at, when they began to understand concepts like being a party to the crime. Maybe mm. you weren't the trigger man, but you helped in some way. So you're, yes. you're just as exposed to punishment as the trigger man. Mm -hmm. Understanding uh, constructive versus actual possession. Mm. If two people get together and share money to buy some drugs, for example, mm -hmm. and you come and pick me up in your car, whether you know what I have on me or not, if the blue lights come on and I stick it under the seat, wow. all of a sudden the law presumes you, the driver of the vehicle, mm -hmm. have knowledge of what's in your car. Mm. So you're in a bad way. Mm -hmm. We tell these kids, watch out who you hang out with. That's exactly Be right. careful who you're around because they can expose you. They're either going to lift you up mm -hmm. or they're going to possibly expose you and bring you down. Mm. And it's those kind of concepts that I saw that they, they just didn't understand. Mm -hmm. And so I felt it on my heart, and when I get some on my heart, I'm going to follow it. Yes, sir. That I started a program called ABLE. Mm -hmm. Stands for Adult-Based Legal Education. The whole concept being make them better able to make better decisions, mm -hmm. better able to be productive members of society and to, and to be smart. Because we see these scenarios over and over mm -hmm. that teenagers find themselves in that oftentimes lead to criminal charges. Wow. And I met with the school system, and they mm -hmm. basically opened up the doors for me to go in to the high schools in Douglas County. Mm -hmm. And at the ninth grade level, so right before they're about to be considered yeah. an adult in the eyes of the criminal justice wow. system, and we bring up some of the drama students, and we act out scenarios, and mm -hmm. I use that to teach them some of these legal concepts. Mm -hmm. But it came up the other day because we were talking about the issues of, of gang violence. Yes. And the gang problem mm -hmm. presents a really a dual threat. Obviously, it impacts the safety of your community. Right. You don't want that. You want to be able to go to dinner with your mm -hmm. family to play at the parks mm -hmm. and not have to worry about that. But it also presents a threat to our young men and women who That's are right. falling prey to that mentality, to mm. people who are saying, come be a part of this. Mm -hmm. So uh, it's a problem we have to deal with. Yes. And we have a very aggressive law. It's very broad mm -hmm. in the state of Georgia that talks about the notion that if you have a group of three or more mm -hmm. and they're associated in facts, so you can prove it however the evidence plays out. If it's something they wear that's the same, right. some common name, some signs or symbols that they use, tattoos. some emblems, some tattoos, yeah. it can be anything. The list mm -hmm. is... Is, is just goes on and on. Mm -hmm. Whatever associates them in fact, and that's a pattern of activity, if that group ever begins to break the law, mm -hmm. if they begin to engage in violations of the law, selling the violation drugs. of the Georgia Controlled Substances Act, fancy okay. word for selling drugs. Selling drugs. <laughs> if they're selling drugs, <laughs> yeah. if they're doing crimes of violence, mm. and that's what we would often see. This group would have problems with another group. They'd start fighting. Somebody mm. would pull out a knife. We had it got so bad to where they were shooting at each other driving down Chapel Hill Road, and we're talking nearly 10 years ago. Lord have mercy. So we started teaching the teenagers mm -hmm. about what constitutes a gang mm -hmm. so they can be more aware of their behavior. Mm -hmm. Now, we never want to take the approach that, okay, four people went to the mall and right. they were dressed alike and one of them committed a crime, so they're a gang. That's not the truth. Right. And we have to have credibility in what we do. Mm -hmm. But when we see repeated behavior mm -hmm. and the group is engaging in this behavior together, yes. the legislature has passed laws that says that can be punishable as criminal street gang activity. Mm -hmm. Now, the big problem really it begins with the underlying criminal behavior as well, yeah. the selling of the drugs. Because mm -hmm. if you think about that, we're in a period of criminal justice reform. We want to help addicts. Mm -hmm. We've learned that punishing these the people who, who are suffering something mm -hmm. is not the proper way and does not make our community safe. Mm -hmm. Sounds good to some people to say, oh, he's a three-time convicted felon. Yeah. I gave him 10 years in prison. Yeah. But he's going right in the door and right back out. Wow. Because we have violent offenders we need to keep. Mm -hmm. So we had to change our philosophy about that. Okay. And so in trying to reform some of these addicts through drug court and programs really aimed at treating them, mm -hmm. then there came more, more accountability for these people who are dealing drugs who are out there selling it, taking okay. advantage of these people. Mm -hmm. So that's very serious behavior for that us. That is serious. But right about that same time, um, about 10 years ago really, mm -hmm. is when I call him Gary Chief Sparks. I have to be yes. a little more formal. You're against violence. He's like a, he's oh, like no, a brother a to me. Yes. When I sat down with him and, and, and uh, I call him Wink, Winkleplek, when we <laughs> sat down and we talked about their idea about youth against violence, uh -huh. 
it was because all this was going on and mm -hmm. we all felt the same way. And, and to me, the beginning of that program was really the beginning mm. in this community mm -hmm. of a sort of change in philosophy yeah. to be more engaged in the community, especially with our youth to mm -hmm. try to educate them. And that's kind of my motto, educate before we incarcerate. Wow. I feel very strongly about that because if I stand up there and my folks are trying to send somebody to prison, mm -hmm. I want to know that we have done everything we can yes, sir. to educate them, to reach out to them, and to help them know the law and to know the right path. And so that's something that's been very important and it's been very productive. I have young men and women, I'll be at the mall and they'll stop me yeah. and say, hey, are, are you the DA? You yes. came and talked to my school and mm -hmm. I'm doing this, I'm doing that. And they're telling me success stories and telling me what they learned. Yes, and sir. so it's just something that I think we have a responsibility mm -hmm. for, for these mm -hmm. youth. To and educate them. It accomplishes safety in our community as well, the more educated mm -hmm. the community is, so that we're working together. That's right. And that's very important. And I think it's a, it's kind of a, it's a new day in Douglas County for that kind of collaboration. Yes, sir. With my office, with the sheriff, mm -hmm. with the chief of police. And, and there's accountability to each other now mm -hmm. more than ever, and there's accountability to the public. But I can tell you that I know those gentlemen real well. Yes, sir. And reaching out to the youth and mm -hmm. saving our youth, we all feel that in our heart. We don't want to lock any of them up. We'll I do our job. Mm -hmm. That's what the sheriff says. I'll do my job if you make me. That's right. We're going to do our job, but at the same time, we're going to engage in our responsibility to try to help the community and educate those teens as well. Yes, sir. Because for me, not having a father, not knowing him until mm -hmm. I was a, a teenager, until I was was moving into high school, mm -hmm. um, I needed other people to invest in my life. That's right. I needed other people to guide me. Mm -hmm. And so we're going to try to do as much as we can mm -hmm. to do that for this well, community. Well, thank you. And it, it's really making a difference. I see yeah. you at the Youth Against Violence um, meetings on Saturdays. I don't know when you have time. Yeah. To, you're at churches, you're at schools, you're at forums. You, you are everywhere in the community, and we really appreciate it. You give some recommendations for food, too. Oh, yeah. Tell Chef, <laughs> I'll tell you, I'll give him a plug. <laughs> Chef Ricks is probably is responsible for the slow progress of my diet, but the man can flat out cook over there. Oh, my uh, goodness. Down 92 across from Stewart. But that's, yes, uh, sir. That's some good food over there. Yes, sir. So you were, and you know Absolutely. that my sorority, we had a, a backpack and health fair or something and your office won for yeah. the lip sync contest we did, we with, did. with Brandon Penniman yeah. and yep, Fit for absolutely. the Future. Brandon's one of our community partners and that's yes. that's what I've learned. We we all hear it takes a village. Yes. But sir. if you're gonna get out there and live it, you're going to realize that you're gonna have to partner with people in your community. Mm -hmm. Like minded people that's with right. a like heart who are trying to accomplish the same thing. Mm -hmm. Brandon's doing some incredible things. He is. So he's one of my biggest community partners and he mm -hmm. wanted us to do the lip sync thing we don't really know how to do things halfway, oh no you so, you went all you the know, way we, out we did some some local guys we did some outcasts we did hey yeah yes and it was good because that type <laughs> what that accomplishes for us mm -hmm. you know obviously we had fun we yes, were out sir. there in the community but what it accomplishes for us it is more humanizing than criminalizing yes sir you know it's it's bringing everybody together to see us in a different light mm -hmm. where we're not just up there with with suits and ties and trying to send people to prison and yelling, screaming about criminal charges when yeah. we're out there engaging with the community so that they are more comfortable approaching us yes, and talking sir. with us and availing themselves of our services. Mm -hmm. Because at the end of the day, we're problem solvers. That's we're right. We're going to do what we can to solve problems. Mm -hmm. And we want them to see that human side of us. Mm -hmm. So it's good for my prosecutors to experience the community that way. Mm -hmm. It's good for the community to experience my folks that way. That's so it was right. a it was it was a good thing. Yeah. We were helping kids too. So, and you all, you so all we had a lot great. of fun. Yeah. You were great. It was hot. But but it was hot. Yeah. Oh my but, goodness. Yeah. But you know, that's really why people move to a community right. for schools and for safety. And we want law enforcement to be tough but fair. Absolutely. You know, and, and that's all I really believe yeah. being here uh, twenty two years that that's where we are now. You I know, agree. Lady Justice is not peeking under the Right. A little blind to see, you know, it isn't. It's it's what the Constitution says. Yeah. It, regardless, race, creed, Absolutely. color, nationality, sex. If you've done something and you 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 met the crime, then you have to pay to do the time. That's right. So the consequences need that. to be the same for everyone, but the opportunities need to be the same for everyone as well. That's Doesn't right. matter who you know, what you contributed to whose campaign, or how That's long right. you've known people, or mm -hmm. everybody needs to have the same opportunity. That's right. And 
we're going to do what we can to reach all aspects of our community. Yes, sir. And that's very important to us because it, it helps restore. I mean, there's no way around it. There's there's a lot of distrust out there mm-hmm. in um, in society mm-hmm. between the criminal justice field, not just law enforcement, but the criminal justice field and the wow. community. People are seeing these things, and uh, you and I have talked about it mm-hmm. before. We're not going to lean on anybody in Washington, D.C. or the White that's House right. or any. That's right. up there to solve our problems. This That's is right. our it's community. Our community. Mm-hmm. We have to own it. We have to work together. And so I think our solutions are found here in the in the community. I believe that's that That's where too. our focus is is going to be. So that's right. Now you are a stellar attorney. You were the I appreciate that. Uh, yes, sir. And you were the district attorney of the year for the state of Georgia in 2009. Tell us how that um, how that felt. And you know, it's really validation for years of hard work and your love for. Um, how in the world did you get to the point from you were telling, you know, living with your grandmother yeah. to get through college and really have the fever and the tenacity and the drive to do this, to become an attorney and then become the top DA in the whole state of Georgia? Yeah. Right here in Douglas County. Well, that was actually when I was solicitor, though. But let me tell you the story okay. kind of on how it unfolded for me. You know, it's, it's one of those things that growing up with my grandmother, Mm-hmm. Uh, I was surrounded by all of the negative things that come along with that sort of lower income uh, part of society. My mm-hmm. uncles were in and out of, of jail and prison. There was wow. drugs everywhere. There was violence. But my grandmother, almost on a daily basis, I can almost remember it, that she would instill in me mm-hmm. the hope that I, I didn't have to settle for that. The hope That's that right. I could be whatever I wanted to be. Wow. And her and mom, they kept me in church. Mm-hmm. And that was the foundation that I needed, so they kept me hopeful mm-hmm. for a better life. Wow. And fortunately for me, there were uh, a couple of, of um, you know, it's funny the things that you remember, and yeah. the things that really strike you. And I remember mm-hmm. as a young man, as a child, a couple of things. I remember one time when um, some law enforcement officers looked at me, and I was probably a dirty little kid, and then from a from a poor family, and I remember them saying, you know, he doesn't have a chance. Wow. They don't have a chance. Dang. You know, that kind of stuff just sticks with you. Yeah. But fortunately, I also remember a couple of law enforcement officers, one in particular named Agent Pickett who worked for the GBI, that when he would come and uh, deal with my family members that Mm -hmm. he had to deal with, he would take the time to speak to me and pat me on the head and give me a sucker or whatever and just take time to speak to me Mm -hmm. and acknowledge me and tell me that you're not going to be like these guys. You're not going to do that. So I just had different little little areas of of positive influence and hope that were coming to me. But it was my my grandmother and one of my uncles, the one the one good one who Mm -hmm. kind of took me on as a son, even though I wasn't his Mm -hmm. his responsibility. He felt that heart for me and they kind of kept me pointed in the right direction and moving forward and you know no matter how you figure it the journey is one step at a time yes sir you have to take that first step and then that next step and then that next step mm-hmm. and you look back and you've gone somewhere yeah but it's certainly not because brian fortner's great mm-hmm. it's because god brought me through that amen i had people investing in my mm-hmm. life because they saw my potential mm-hmm. and god had a bigger plan for me mm-hmm. and i firmly believe that what i'm doing is not a job it's a calling for me yes. for a time such as this. Mm-hmm. It could change tomorrow. Mm-hmm. DA's office doesn't belong to Brian Fortner. It never belonged to any man. Mm-hmm. It belongs to the citizens. Yes, sir. So if God has a different plan for me tomorrow, well, I'm mm-hmm. going to follow that plan. Mm-hmm. But this is where he put me, and this is where he put my heart. And mm-hmm. um, I, when you know it, you just know it. Yeah. And so it was a, just a one step at a time. There were challenges mm-hmm. along the way, mm-hmm. but... I had those people who were who were invested in me and giving mm-hmm. me hope, and, and I just kept taking steps. You just yeah. keep taking steps, and then all of a sudden, you graduated from undergrad. I was actually wow. a political science and criminal justice dual major. Okay. And then you take that next step, and you get into law school, and you wow. start that process, and the first year is gone. You wonder during the first year <laughs> if you're going to make it through the first year, but it's just one step at a time, and yeah. then you take the bar, and then I became a prosecutor here mm-hmm. in uh, Douglas County, on October 2nd of 2000. Wow. And I worked in the DA's office as mm-hmm. an assistant district attorney. And mm-hmm. you kind of, the way it starts out, you don't get the biggest or best of cases at yeah. the very beginning. So uh-huh. I worked my way through those cases. And I was then trusted with some bigger cases. And 
in 2007, wow. I became the solicitor. Mm-hmm. Our, other, our previous solicitor had moved on, mm-hmm. and there was a vacancy, and I, I wanted to take some steps and improve that office, and I felt we could do a good job with that. And mm-hmm. so I, I was appointed solicitor, and then I ran and, and was elected solicitor, and that's when I received the Solicitor of the Year Award okay. in 2009. Oh, so it was Solicitor of the Year, so not the So Solicitor year. of the yes, Year. Yes, sir. But you were appointed and, by uh, Governor Purdue. By Governor Purdue. Purdue. Mm-hmm. Then I was elected mm-hmm. and became solicitor. And really, I had a tremendous staff, and we were able to really turn things in that office around and mm-hmm. get it running in the right direction. And it, it went really well. And wow. I had some people come to me the, that felt, Mm-hmm. I should move mm-hmm. back to the DA's office and engage some of these bigger issues yeah. that that our community was facing, and I made the decision to do that mm-hmm. and became the acting DA and was elected in wow. 2014. 14. Yay! And so we have um, we're, we, we're thrilled with the way things are going. We've been able to to really do some good things in mm-hmm. the community, but it's through those partnerships yes, that sir. we're able to accomplish anything. Mm-hmm. The left hand doesn't know what the right hand is doing, mm-hmm. and we can't be as effective. Mm-hmm. But it's that willingness, I think, what it takes is, is us all putting egos aside. That's right. Putting my job, your job aside and just saying, hey, we care about this community. How can we work together? Mm-hmm. And now we have a lot of people at the table with that same mentality and That's that right. same approach. And it's not just that there, it's no hiding the ball. Mm. You know, if there's a problem, Chief Sparks will call me and say, hey, we got a problem. Yes, and sir. And we will address it together. Mm-hmm. It's mm-hmm. a problem with an officer. It's a problem with somebody in my office, with somebody in some other office. Mm-hmm. Uh, nobody's above the law. Wow. Nobody mm-hmm. is above being held accountable. And mm-hmm. so that accountability to each other and to the people, I think, has made us better and it's made us more effective mm-hmm. because we're getting more and more. I have people call me in the community mm-hmm. that say, hey, I heard that you're doing this or you're doing that. I heard you're trying to advocate for a child advocacy center. I want to help. Yes. I heard you have a program in the schools. I want to help. I heard you go into the churches. Come to my church. And yeah. so the word gets mm-hmm. out and we start working together mm-hmm. and we can have an impact. You know, That's I, right. I always believe we can save one kid mm-hmm. then it's worth it. But I know now that we've saved a lot more than yes, one sir. together. Yes, sir. And so I'm, I'm real happy with the way things are going. We're yeah. still able to, to be as effective as we've ever been in prosecuting cases. Mm-hmm. Uh, we closed more murder cases with convictions in 2015 oh. than ever in the history of this county. Wow. So we can do the job. Yes, we sir. We can do what we're, what we're charged Mandated with doing. Do. Mm-hmm. Um, and that's the backbone of what we're doing. And because we have that reputation and we have good people, mm-hmm. it allows us to make smart decisions about these cases and to impact people's life. Because if we can find a way to make somebody who's charged with a crime a mm-hmm. productive member of society, mm-hmm. then we make society safer. That's right. And so we started a lot of programs. We've talked about the kids. Yeah, so drug you know, court we, we is started, We started the ABLE program with the kids in the mm-hmm. schools. I started a teen intervention program. So when a teen, once they reach that age of 17, mm-hmm. criminal justice system says they're an adult. Wow. They're coming to big boy court, so to speak, mm. and they don't have mama and coach and daddy and teachers coming with them. They're standing there on their wow. own. Wow. With somebody who's 20 years old, 30 years old, 40 years old, real career For criminals real. sometimes. Mm-hmm. It's, it's, it's the real deal. Scary. And so we started a program to say if we get that type of teenager who's been charged with a crime, rather than just running them through the system, rather than just seeking a conviction, mm-hmm. we're going to look at each case and see mm-hmm. if we have candidates that we can divert away from the criminal justice system. Mm-hmm. Can we figure out what the problem wow. was, what was missing that made them want to get in this trouble that made Mm -hmm. them want to break the law is it something we can correct and so that program basically allows me to enter into an agreement with them Mm -hmm. that says hey you've been charged with a crime our choices are we can prosecute you right and just go through the system as it's laid out in the statutes and the procedures or we can enter agreement Mm -hmm. that you're going to do x y and z Mm -hmm. to hopefully address issues of community service. I want you to learn to serve your community Mm -hmm. and to address whatever the underlying issue was that led to that criminal behavior. Mm -hmm. And if you're able to stay clean, if you're able to stay out of trouble Mm -hmm. and accomplish these things and then try to hook them up with some type of mentoring program as well, Mm -hmm. after a period of time, then we'll agree to dismiss their charges and expunge their record. You're giving so them a it chance. it puts it on them yeah. to realize the consequences of their behavior and what they're facing, mm-hmm. but to take an opportunity to improve their life and learn from it. That's right. Because there are a lot of challenges people get when they get a felony now. 
Yes. And if they commit a felony Whew. and it's violent, well, that's, that's just the, that's just the consequences. Mm -hmm. But we have people who um, can't get jobs because yeah. they have felonies on their record for Vote. things they did years and years and years and years ago. Mm -hmm. and so we're trying to tackle a lot of those problems. But we have that teen intervention program. Mm -hmm. We have a pretrial diversion program. That's the same thing mm -hmm. for older mm -hmm. individuals because we'll still that. get that case of somebody who's 30 or 40 years old and then all of a sudden they're charged with a crime first time ever in their life yeah and you look at that and you say well something has happened here mm -hmm. you live 30 or 40 years and you got in no trouble and now yeah. all of a sudden you're facing a criminal charge wow something happened let's mm -hmm. figure it out mm -hmm. and so if we find somebody who's promising in that environment then we sort of look at the time they've invested in a productive life and said hey yeah. you deserve another chance yeah let's look at this and yes, so we sir. do the same thing with them we reach an agreement try to deal with the issue if it's counseling that's needed if it's some type of treatment mm -hmm. we'll try to get that treatment and divert them away from the criminal justice Great. system when you're talking about some of the problems we're facing drugs for example mm -hmm. we talked about that earlier mm -hmm. we have now a big push for accountability courts in yes. the state of Georgia. Mm -hmm. That's been part of our big overall criminal justice reform package in this state. We, okay. You know, I felt that we're kind of sort of leading the nation in that area wow. as far as the amount of change we've had mm -hmm. in just a short amount of years. But the accountability courts are designed to really deal with the problems that are being overlooked in our current criminal justice system. Mm -hmm. And there are really three that we've seen that have been effective, and two of them we've mm -hmm. already started in Douglas County. As you know, Judge McLean's played mm -hmm. a huge uh, part in that, mm -hmm. but we have now a drug court in mm -hmm. Douglas County, drug and court. we've had graduations and successes mm -hmm. from that particular program. But if individuals uh, obtain criminal charges, if they are charged with a crime and they possibly have a record, but it appears that the issue is some type of addiction to mm -hmm. a controlled substance, then that program is aimed at dealing with that addiction mm -hmm. to solve the problem. Right. Because we've seen what happens after years and years and years of sending people to prison because they were drug addicts. They go in a drug addict, mm -hmm. they, they come, come out a drug addict. Mm -hmm. And so it's aimed at kind of changing the philosophy and actually getting them back on their feet, dealing that's with right. the addiction through treatment, mm -hmm. treatment that's proven to work, yes. treatment methods that they've seen uh, good results from. Mm -hmm but also engaging them on their life skills, yeah. helping them get a job, helping them mm -hmm. learn how to relate to wow. each other, helping them learn how important relationships are and mm -hmm. accountability. And so it's a very, very good program. Good. Oh, and then the other me. one, do you have, um, so it was accountability court. <coughs> we were talking about mental health, yeah. but that's a whole nother issue. Well, it's really, yeah. it's part of that okay. same umbrella. Mm -hmm. You know, two of our biggest failures in the criminal justice system, the way we deal with drug addicts, mm -hmm and the way we deal with our, our mental health mm -hmm. individuals and people who are suffering from different mental diseases mm -hmm. that they shouldn't be in prison. Right. Prison's not equipped to deal with them. That's right. And yet that's where we've sent them. Mm -hmm. <coughs> Excuse me. Mm -hmm. uh, but years ago we had a lot of options available yeah. for these people suffering from, from different mental health conditions and things. and they kind of disappeared under the yeah. promise. This is what I'm told. It was before I was in the yeah, system, Yeah, Millersville, so there was a place I'm not, they... I'm not too old. That's I haven't been around right. that long, but <laughs> those a lot of those services disappeared mm -hmm. under the promise that, hey, we're going to redo this and rethink mm -hmm. it and reinvest, and the reinvestment never really seemed to have happened. Mm -hmm. So we see prisons and jails who have these mental health. That's right. Really, they're patients almost. They're That's inmates, right. but they're suffering from, from some mm -hmm. uh, mental health issue mm -hmm. that prevents them from seeing life as simple as, okay, do right or do wrong. That's right. Because the don't voice is telling them something else. the same else. way. Yeah. And so it put people in impossible positions because if you're in your neighborhood mm -hmm. and the same person keeps doing the same yeah. thing and it's causing issues or they're breaking windows or they're threatening people or they're mm -hmm. getting violent, the sheriff and the local prosecutor is going to have to do something inside. about yeah. that. Yeah. And if there are no options, well, they're keeping them in the jail. They're mm -hmm. keeping them in prison. Mm -hmm. But it's not solving the problem. That's right. The result right. has been we have people in prison who probably shouldn't be there because mm -hmm. we've never got to the underlying issue. Gosh. So we actually um, pled our first three uh, defendants into mental health court. I think oh. it was last week, okay. uh, within the last couple weeks. Okay. And we're real excited about that. But mm -hmm. it's the same thing. Yeah. It is a court that is designed to utilize treatment that's proven to work mm -hmm. to help these individuals mm -hmm. with whatever type of counseling, 
whatever type of, of life guidance they need, whatever type of treatment through medicine or whatever other, yes, whatever other means, mm -hmm. but it helps support them in getting themselves to a place of, of wow. clearer thinking. Great. And rather than just trying to prosecute them and mm -hmm. put them in the system because we know it doesn't work. Mm -hmm. And so we're real excited about the mental health court Good. because it's, it's helping us to try to treat and help some individuals who we know are suffering That's right. that at the same time may have violated the law that have impacted other people. Mm -hmm. Well, if we put them in prison, they're going to send them back out. They're going to go Still right back out in the community yep. and have the same impact on those people. That's right. So let's try to solve the problem. We've been able to do that through drug court. We're doing that now through mental health court and, mm -hmm. and now getting people working together and networking with those types of resources and partnerships. And uh, hopefully one day we'll have a veterans court because yes. a lot of our veterans are suffering yes. from a lot of those types of, mm -hmm. of issues, addictions and mental health issues, mm -hmm. and the, the post-traumatic stress, it's just all these things That's right. that you hear about that they deserve That's to right. be uh, recognized, mm -hmm. to be treated, to mm -hmm. be helped, mm -hmm. and uh, to be dealt with in a way that's fair when mm -hmm. they're a part of the criminal justice system. And so I think really everybody's on board with these alternative courts now in Douglas County. Once Judge McLean sort of took that mm -hmm. that leap of faith, and and you know him, he does something. He, oh yeah, he doesn't do it halfway. I mean, he's a committed ahead. fella. Yes, sir. And uh, you know, we met early on, and we were on board, and everybody partnered up, and everybody's moving forward together, and we're just really excited about. Wow. it. We've seen some very good responses. When you see somebody mm -hmm. who goes through drug court, mm. who was completely hopeless, wow. who had nothing to show, no job, no hope, mm. nothing. We're losing their kids. Mm. When you see them get through that program mm -hmm. and graduate and look back and, and recognize and, and yeah. tell individuals involved that, hey, I get my kids back. Wow. You know, I, I can get a job. Victory. Uh, it, absolutely. I yeah. mean, how is it? How is it that we can't be involved in that? That's how right. How could we ever turn away from that? Wow. Because that's changing a life in a way that's effective and it's going to affect other people. It's going to impact mm -hmm. them mm -hmm. and it's going to make this community safer. Because right. the other alternative was to send that person to prison as an addict and watch them come right back out wow. as an addict. You've changed the trajectory of their and lives so really you and do. their generations. And, and it impacts society. Mm -hmm. It makes society safer when we can deal with the problems that are leaving, leading to criminal behavior. That's right. And, and we firmly believe in that. And we kind of have sort of a system-wide approach now. Our law enforcement agencies Good. are on board. Mm -hmm. Our judicial Mm -hmm. side is on board, the judges are on board, my office is on board, the solicitor's office is on board, the public defender's office wow. is on board. Everybody's talking and communicating and, and working together to try to deal with these issues. And that's been a, a huge step. And mm -hmm. we're just starting really to, to scratch the surface of our capabilities in that in that way. Yeah. So we're constantly looking to expand drug court and, and mental health court as we're beginning to understand it a little bit better. But Very those good. alternative courts have been really, really, really big for good. us no, um, no. because it's helped us deal with the problems. Yes, sir. You know, you know, as well as I do, a lot of people here in society don't understand that in Georgia, we we incarcerate a lot of people. Mm -hmm. We got a mm -hmm. lot of people in our prison system. Mm -hmm. It's important that we look back on why that is and what caused that. Because me as a DA, when I'm thinking, how do I keep this community safe? and I see myself getting these parole notices that say, hey, we have this child molester. Hey, we have this person who's committed a, a heinous crime of violence, who's mm -hmm. really hurt someone, and they're being released on parole. And then I think, you know, what, what, what's, what's causing this? When I know there, there are people who had drug sentences previously, mm -hmm. who are serving sentences that are not even allowed to have parole. They're wow. being served sentences as a recidivist. They were sentenced as a recidivist because mm -hmm. they have multiple they drug offenses. Mm -hmm. That can't happen now because we've changed Good. the way we approach this. And through criminal justice reform, those type of drug offenses don't even qualify really anymore. Okay. You, you hope to recognize addictions and treat it as addiction. Mm -hmm. But we can't ignore the fact that for years it was being treated that way. Mm -hmm. So one of the things that occurred to me as I'm seeing these parole notices of these violent or concerning offenders mm -hmm. is who's being locked held in prison right now mm -hmm. on some sentence previously okay that's probably not fair probably not just so I met with Southern Center for Human Rights and uh -huh. we started something called the sentencing integrity project actually went to the DA's Association 
pitched it to all the DAs in the state, and a lot of them are doing it as well. But what we decided to do was to take a look back at the people that we have serving sentences in prison right now. Mm -hmm. Take a look at the people who are serving sentences on drug offenses and review those sentences and make sure that they were appropriate so that we don't have someone who, who should be in a drug court somewhere right. again treated, mm -hmm. who is actually sitting in a prison somewhere serving day for day time, 10, 15, 20, 30 years. Wow. We had some even serving life Gosh. for drug addiction. Are you serious? And so wow. the Sentencing Integrity Project, we were able to, working with the Department of Corrections and through mm -hmm. the Prosecuting Attorneys Council, get a list of all the inmates hmm. broken down by jurisdiction really? who are serving over a 10-year prison sentence on a drug offense. Mm -hmm. And we're able to pull all of those cases and we're actually in the process of reviewing some my right now. Goodness. But my theory is, wow. and my philosophy on it, is if we can get one of these people out mm -hmm. who shouldn't really be there in the first place, mm -hmm. just were caught up in the system and mm -hmm. we've changed our philosophy and it couldn't even happen today, then how do we not try to to modify those mm -hmm. sentences so that these people can get out of prison, can get into these programs, can get the treatment they need, and we can keep child molesters and violent felons mm -hmm. in prison mm -hmm. where they need to be. Wow. It's just a focusing of your resources. People say, well, that sounds weak. You're trying to review sentences and let people out. But you have to yeah. stop with the rhetoric, mm -hmm. and you have to look at the system as a whole, mm -hmm. and you have to understand that they're paroling people out because these people were, some of them were allowed to get parole, mm -hmm. but this particular group wasn't because of the way they were sentenced. Wow. So who do we need in there? Mm -hmm. The drug addict, the child molester. Rehabilitate the, the drug robbers, addict and bring them, you know? yeah, I mean, th bring them back in society. Those are the people that we need to stay in prison yeah. so that we can be safe. That's right. And these other people, we need to help so that they can be productive members of our society. Because That's sitting right. there for 20 or 30 years Gosh. because you were a drug addict, How's that justice? It's an addiction. It's not, yeah. it's not weakness to look at that mm -hmm. and say that's not justice. That's right. It's just reasonable. It's that's just right. common sense. Mm. I mean, so that's kind of some of the stuff that, that we're involved in is, is a part of the reform of how we're approaching cases now, mm -hmm. but also being aware enough to look back and say, hey, let's make sure we don't have people in the system that are serving sentences that may be unfair and unjust, that we're just calling, oh, somebody else did that. Oh, so that's a problem of yesterday. No, it's our problem today because other people are being released mm -hmm. when these people are being held. Wow. We know we have too many people locked up. Yes, we sir. know that the system can't hold them. We're mm -hmm. addressing that in a lot of different ways, mm -hmm. but we need to be smart about who we are releasing back into our community. Mm -hmm those suffering from drug addiction shouldn't be being held. Shouldn't be one of those. So. And I periodically get letters from, right. from prison and people write about homelessness and, and serious issues. They yeah. have time to think about it. And you're right, if you bring some of those folks who've had those unjust seemingly at right. the time, which, which really are now, but they right. didn't know it at the time uh, for extensive time for drug addiction, then that can, that'll be one of those groups that can help and see they've had time to think about things, get right. rehabilitated and come right. back and be uh, vulnerable members in society. It's so just a new, it's a, it's a new thing. philosophy system wide, yeah. really. Okay. And I think it's just important that we look back and say, okay, let's not just do right moving forward. Right. Let's do right moving forward. But if we need to reach back and help some people or rescue some folks who may have been caught in this system that was somewhat out of control, mm -hmm. well, let's do it. Yes, sir. It, it, it makes our community safer mm -hmm. because it frees up space for these violent offenders wow. and gets people who need treatment treatment and out of those spaces. That's right. So you just got to ignore the rhetoric and the ego sometimes. Mm. You just do the right thing. Yes, That's sir. really what it kind of comes down to. Now, Child us. Advocacy Center. So, yeah. I'm going to talk about that. Absolutely. Again, we're, we're very excited about that notion. Uh -huh. um, a lot of people wouldn't even understand what I'm talking about when I say a Child Advocacy Center. Over the years, mm -hmm. as children have suffered abuse physically, sexually, <laughs> We hate to talk about it, but it's the yeah. reality out there. <sighs> when they suffer this type of abuse, we have to be very careful in the way that we deal with them. Mm -hmm. We can't get so caught up in trying to prosecute a case that we further victimize these children. Mm -hmm. You know, looking at a, a five or six or seven year old little boy or girl, tell them, tell me what so-and-so did to you. Mm -hmm. Did this happen, did that happen? Yeah. And not understanding the trauma that that child is going through and the damage that's being done by mm. this continued repeated questioning, well, we've learned how destructive that is mm -hmm. over the years. We've learned that we cannot do that because we're further victimizing these children. Mm. And 
there is a concept out there called mm -hmm. a child advocacy center that involves really we keep talking about the village it involves a lot of mm -hmm. the the people in the village who work with taking care of children mm -hmm. working together to meet all of the needs of those children when they are victimized okay. when they are suffering so by having a child advocacy center what it will do is it will serve as a support not only to local law enforcement in mm -hmm. our office right. the prosecutor's office but it'll also serve as a support for the local hospitals, mm -hmm. the local treatment facilities, because you will have a central place where people are trained to recognize the special needs of children mm -hmm. who will conduct forensic interviews the way they're supposed to be conducted, okay. the way that they're not suggested. Yes. You know, you don't want to suggest There's things something. to a child. Mm -hmm. You don't want to harm them by planting those type of seeds in their mind, and you don't right. want to do an injustice either. Mm -hmm. You want to get to the truth but you want to do it in a way that doesn't victimize the child. Mm -hmm. So there are people who were trained to give those type of forensic interviews. Okay. You have this child advocacy center, you take them to, them to an environment, it's not intimidating. Yeah. I mean, you and I have talked about it. it's intimidating to walk in the courthouse. Oh my goodness, It can be yes. intimidating to walk in the police mm -hmm. precinct down there. It's a beautiful mm -hmm. place, right. but still you're walking into, yes, the, in, into the police department. That's right. And there's bricks and columns, <laughs> and for a child, that's it's bigger very, than life and yes. very intimidating. Mm -hmm. So you're talking about a place that's painted in a way that's friendly, mm -hmm. that has a child-friendly environment, that has all of the things, the characters, the books, just anything like that yeah. that would comfort a child mm -hmm. in that type of situation so that we can keep some level of normalcy okay. for them while doing our job of finding yes. out what the truth was mm -hmm. and from that truth trying to determine what these children need mm -hmm. and how to meet those needs. Because you got to understand, if a, if a parent has brought a child to the police who's been victimized, yeah. well, what are they facing with the other parent? Mm -hmm. Is it mm -hmm. possibly another abuser? Mm -hmm. Do they have a home to go back to? Yeah. Do they know where their next meal is coming wow. from? Did they leave without packing their bag? Gosh. All of these things are needs that they face. Well, by walking into the police department, you don't necessarily have those needs met. The police mm -hmm. have a, a mandated job they're mm -hmm. doing. But by having a child advocacy center and working together, when we get a family like that, the police have individuals who are trained in, as counselors, who are trained mm -hmm. to do forensic interviews that they work with to conduct the investigation. They also have individuals um, from the medical profession who are trained to do these examinations of kids. You're talking wow. about something that can be very, very traumatic. Yes. You, if you get someone, even though they're trying to do right, who mm -hmm. is examining a child that doesn't mm. know what they're doing, yeah. then we could have real problems and further traumatize that child. Mm -hmm. So the approach is to have a more holistic approach to dealing with that. Mm -hmm. Not, okay, we take you to the police station where you talk to the investigator. Now yeah. we take you down to children's health care where you do a forensic interview. Now we take you over here and you get an examination. We don't want to do that. Mm -hmm. By having a child advocacy center, your law enforcement agency will be engaged there. Mm -hmm. Your forensic interviewer will be engaged there. Very your good. sane nurse or someone else who can do that type of, of um, examination mm -hmm. for physical evidence or trauma mm -hmm. or harm is there. And everybody's working together. The left hand knows what the right hand's doing. You do it in a way that keeps the child's life as normal as possible. Yeah. It's not going to be normal, but as but normal as possible. And that has become a much more effective approach to dealing with our child victims Very because good. it helps meet their needs, mm -hmm. not just find the truth. We don't want to get so caught up in prosecuting people that we don't understand saving this child mm -hmm. and protecting them is the number one goal. That's right. We don't want to further victimize them. Wow. So by having a child advocacy center working together um, with the task force, mm -hmm. um, will hopefully allow us to pool a lot of our resources in the city mm -hmm. and the county that are involved in the treatment of child victims mm -hmm. into one area, mm -hmm. one place that they can go Great. and to have more of a holistic support for them. We're talking about even if, if they need clothes, having a clothes wow. bank there. If they need yeah. food, having a food bank there. If the kids need toys and things, letting them go in and pick up a toy to play with just mm -hmm. to feel like a child mm -hmm. and bringing all of that Together, we're working with uh, Barbara Hogan and just a lot of other agencies. We're applying for some grants to try to make Correct. that happen. Miles is applying for mm -hmm. a grant for a victim advocate to work specially with Gosh, children. We're working with the task force and applying mm -hmm. for grants and pooling all of our resources and knowledge to mm. address this need. And so 
we're excited about it yeah, and we're hopeful and we're claiming it and we're yeah. calling it out and we're praying about it. Yeah. And uh, I think it would be just an incredible step yes. for this community and would certainly help us improve our service to our children. Yes, sir. And I mean, what greater cause is there? That's right. If there's nothing else we can agree on, everybody can Thank agree you. on that. we got to do what we go. have to do to save our children. That's right. And so. it's a compassionate arm, really. Absolutely. To, to help in that uh, arena. Now, is there anything else you want to talk to us about or anything that's going on in the DA's office? We are just so elated again that you're here. Absolutely. And that, you know, I know you've, you've given a lot of your success to your surroundings and to your village, yeah. but you know the footsteps of a righteous man are ordered by God, and yeah. so you had to hear his voice and walk in those steps and make those choices, yeah. and, and you've done, a, we're so proud of you, I'm proud well, of you thank as you. my that friend, man, means a lot to me. and just it so really happy that you're here. Well, I've, been, uh, I've, been, I've been blessed in my life with a lot of experience, yes, I've sir. experienced a lot of things, mm -hmm. and I've been blessed with a really good staff. We have a good staff there, people from all walks of life, mm -hmm. all races, religions, every political affiliation you yes, can have sir. now and we've learned that when you talk about diversity mm. people think just diversity of skin color yes, but it's sir. diversity of everything you bring that's right. in life <laughs> that's right and it makes the da's office a richer environment it allows mm -hmm. us to provide a better service mm -hmm. because we don't approach every problem thinking one way yes we we have now a more involved holistic understanding mm -hmm. of the the things that are facing a lot of these defendants. Mm -hmm. And we're determined that we're going to do our job. That's right. We're going to do it in a way that's fair, and we're going to take every opportunity we can to show the way to people, to help them, to guide them, to mm -hmm. save them. Um, and that's just really what we're all about. And I've been fortunate to have people who have come to work for me and some who are already there who believe in that yeah. and who embrace that. Mm -hmm. And so working together, we can get anything done. And seeing people set aside egos, mm -hmm. seeing people know that I'm not worried about your conviction rate. Right. I'm not trying to hear that you're undefeated. That means nothing to me. I want to wow. know that you did justice. That's I want right. to know that you had an impact on somebody's mm -hmm. life. And I've been blessed with good people working for me and good relationships with other with other agencies. Yes, sir. And uh, I think we're able to get some things accomplished. I'm really excited. I love Douglas County. You know, people <laughs> get on social media and they say a lot of crazy things. Yeah. But because you hear about so many things now, mm -hmm. it's easy to think, oh, things are so bad. But I'm out there with my family. Mm -hmm. I when, I, when it's time to go out and eat, we go out and eat here in Douglas County. That's when it's right. time to Me go too. see a movie, we're seeing a movie at Arbor Place. That's right. Right here in the city limits. We are, too. I mean, if we want to go bowling, we're going bowling <laughs> right here. Yes, sir. So it's just uh, the reality is I've seen bad. Mm. I know what bad is. Mm. We're blessed in Douglas County. We are. We're blessed in Douglasville. Mm -hmm. We have a lot of people working together, and it's still that safe family Mm -hmm. small town feel out mm -hmm. here and so we're excited about it i yes, mean i sir. really this is a it's a very exciting time for mm -hmm. the county and for the city there's a lot going on yes sir but uh to those people who would say things are bad i would say look again and look closer all right and get rid of that noise and you'll see exactly what we have what mm -hmm. we have going on that's people working together in mm -hmm. our faith-based community our law mm -hmm. enforcement community our governing community and everybody's coming together and getting things done egos are being set aside mm -hmm. and people are jumping out of the spotlight to get down in the trenches all right and that's what we love i like that's that that needs to be a, right. um, we need to put that on something it's just what we got to do yeah. and uh, i think there's so many sleeves. people here who are willing to do it that it i just, believe that too. it's humbling mm -hmm. and it it brings hope yes it's sir. just a hopeful feeling to it and so we're real we're real happy about it we're going to do our job yes, we're going to sir. keep the community safe but we're mm -hmm. going to do it in a way that's fair for everybody well, so if anybody needs us if anybody uh, any church any organization have kids that they want us to come talk to mm -hmm. or we're taking the able program to the churches we've already Great. done it we've partnered with cornerstone baptist uh -huh. church to, to be part of their summer camp program Very we came good. in there and talked about everything from oh, social wow. media to smart decision making to gangs to violence mm -hmm. but anybody who wants to partner with us just give us a call we'd love wow. to be a part of it well thank so, you so much absolutely. thank you for everything that you're doing in the community most people don't see the district attorney right. um, and as bad as people say things are and you read in the paper yeah. you know that's really not part of our part of our lives every day that right. we're going to go and get prosecuted for something so we appreciate you sharing your heart today. Absolutely. You do your job, and we appreciate it that you keep us safe in this community, yeah. but um, that you have availed yourself to come in and just talk and share 
it's been it's a blessing to me and you're a blessing in this community thank you thank for you everything much, that you do I brian anything you need from me anytime please call me and um you're welcome to come back anytime and talk thank with you us. so much you're i appreciate welcome. that yes sir it's always thank an honor you. yes sir well it's been another edition of positively douglasville we ask you to join in anytime and if you have time to volunteer or do whatever you need to do to roll up your sleeves and get in the trenches as well like our district attorney please do it god bless you have a great day mm -hmm.